Hi, folks. Welcome to Prophecy USA Bible Study Podcast, a podcast specifically designed to unveil a hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. I'm here with my wife, Karen Pearson. Welcome to our 119th podcast. Hard to believe. 119th. And the podcast is not only designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy, but also to unveil your role in Bible prophecy. And we have a lot of comments from different people. And we're going to read one comment right now that Karen has. Yes, this actually is a letter, Rick, from Joan out in Prince George, B.C., Thank you, Joan, from British Columbia. For our American friends, that's about 3,000 miles from us, Mm -hmm. directly west. Yes, she says, Rick, you have a very, very interesting take on prophecy. Excuse me. You sure do know the history of Daniel and Revelation. Wow. You've done a heck of a lot of studying and being able to retain it and relate it. It's amazing. Thank you so much for the book. So much investigating, collating it all. The book is fascinating, as is your delivery of it each week. I've always thought we in the West will have a lot to answer for, especially the U.S. All the headiness of Hollywood, the abortions, dance polls, etc. They're here too, of course, but not on the same scale. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you again for the book, Joan. Thank you, Joan. Now, that was, that, that was from the TV show. Right. So, folks, we have some very good professionals helping us with the TV show. I write the scripts, but they pack it together and, and put everything together, and they, they do a great job. Yes. So I want to thank our crew for making the, the program very professional. But we want to thank you as well, because without your prayers... And, and, and some of you are sending us financial support. We want to thank you for that as well. Um, it's a team effort. It from, really is. From the people praying for us, the financial end, the technical skills. Uh, we're, we're really trying to present the Word of God in a very professional way. Now, last week we answered this question, and we're going to um, use it as a pivotal point for going forward into this week's broadcast. What was last week's question that came? Uh, it was an anonymous person who chose to send this in. And, and the question was, this week is the World Health Organization meeting in Davos, Switzerland. The big deal is the pandemic treaty that 193 countries are supposed to sign. What do you think about this? Okay, we, we spoke about that last week. Mm-hmm. This week's title is shocking prophecies being fulfilled. Um, Two years ago, at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, this is where everyone is today, they're with the World Health Organization. Yes. uh, It went around the world that Justin Trudeau got on the podium and made this statement to the United Nations. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a great reset. This is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems that actually address global changes. Uh, Rex Murphy, I read last week from the National Post, uh, he was not impressed with that statement and he said, nevertheless, the raging pandemic, having wrecked the world's economies, is being taken as a cue by various eminent globalists to pursue a totally unrelated agenda. Rather than being described as an opportunity, this should be seen as opportunism, pure and simple. So in 2021, um, Prophecy USA released their best-selling book, The Hour That Changes Everything, and on page 40, we talked about the New World Order and everything that was coming, the World Health Organization, the G7, And that right now is hitting headlines across the world, what is already happening, what we said in the book. Mm -hmm. Now, this this is a great sign, folks, that means we're tracking correctly with what the Holy Spirit has been saying. There's a lot of traditional people that have been coming against us, but they're slowly losing ground, and they're coming our way. And different prophecy shows are talking now about the New World Order and about Davos and what's happening. 
Now, this progression that what they're doing at the United Nations is the decade of action. It calls for accelerating sustainable solutions to the world's biggest challenges. This all came from 50 years ago from the Club of Rome, Justin Trudeau's father. Yes. And that also was on page 40 in our book. It explains it all. Mm -hmm. So there's some Canadian voices right now that are rising up because the pandemic treaty is a sign that we're going towards a global government. Yes, handing over our sovereignty. And we're losing our sovereignty. Mm. Now, uh, Leslin Lewis is a PC candidate, and she has voiced her opinion, and uh, she uh, holds a PhD in international law from the York University, and she's been following this for three years. And she raised up a lot of questions, and she got a lot of opposition, especially from people from the CBC, Canadian Broadcast Corporation. And these people said that she's a fear monger. She's, she's just, she's bringing all these things up. Two of the people that brought that opposition up against her, one of them worked for the World Health Organization. His name was Hoffman. And another ma man by the name of Professor Timothy Caulfield from the Canada Research Chair in Health, Law, and Policy from the University of Alberta, he made the statement that there is no treaty the World Health Organization could negotiate that would suspend our Constitution. They just don't have power to do that. So you now you have somebody from a former World Health Organization and you have a professor from a university stating that 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 Leslin is wrong this this isn't this isn't going to happen <clears throat> well uh, recently there's a book out and Karen I want you to read what this book says it's from it's from uh, a man by the name of uh, Collins and it's how a society will lose their sovereignty and go to socialism. So from capitalism to socialism. Now, the first thing it says that, that they do is what? They try to control health care. It, the book says you control health care and you control the people. So if you control health care, you control the people. Now, we're not talking about a socialist country. We're talking about a global one world order. Then it says the welfare. next thing, welfare. You take control of every aspect of their lives including food, housing, and income. Okay. And then number three... Education. Take control of what people read and listen to. Take control of what the children learn in school. So you get, you get a propaganda machine going. This is what Hitler did. Mm -hmm. the, the fourth thing is religion. Remove the belief in the God from the government and in the schools. Okay. So these are the stages. Then the fifth stage is what? Class warfare. Divide the people into the wealthy and the poor. This will cause more discontent and it will be easier to take from the wealthy, like taxing them so that they can then support the, for, the poor. So robbing Peter to pay Paul. And the sixth thing you do? Debt. Increase the debt to an unsustainable level. As in mass inflation. Printing money. Printing money. And then the next thing you need to do in order to get a massive social system going. Of control. It's gun control. Removing the ability of people to be able to defend themselves from a government. And finally, Poverty. this is the last thing you, you must maintain in the nation that you want to turn over from capitalism to socialism. What's the last it's thing? It's poverty, Rick. Increase the poverty level as high as possible because poor people are easier to control and it keeps the socialists in power if they're providing everything for them to live. So we just heard um, from Leslin Lewis about the World Health Organization wanting to sign us to sign a treaty in 100. That's the first stages. Mm -hmm. The first stages to get the health. Now, Canada has a national health system. But we're going to give our sovereignty possibly over to the World Health Organization. If they call a pandemic, we'll just do what they say. So they start controlling us. 
Then we have the inflation going out of control. We have government spending out of control. And now you have the CBC is, is going against anyone who's speaking, like Leslyn Lewis, and people who are getting paid by the CBC are coming against her. So who is correct? Who is biased? And perhaps this should give us a hint. In January, a journalist from the CBC, Tara Henley, uh, resigned. And the reasons for which she resigned were itemized in an interview that she had with the National Post on January 3rd of this year. She stated that our $1.2 billion government-funded Canadian broadcast system has... Well, why don't you read it, Karen? What, what does the National Post say? It says, The CBC has become less adversarial to government and corporations and more hostile to ordinary people with ideas that Twitter doesn't like. Okay. Now she said later she stated that to work at the CBC in the current climate is to what? Is to sign on enthusiastically to a radical political agenda that originated on Ivy League campuses, <clears throat> excuse me, Ivy League campuses in the United States and spread through American social media platforms that monetize outrage and stoke societal divisions. Okay, so she's saying it came out of the universities and out of the academia. And what else does she say? It is, uh, it is to allow sweeping societal changes like lockdowns, vaccine mandates, and school closures to roll out with little debate. With little debate. Mm -hmm. And then in quote, it says, to see billionaires amass extraordinary wealth and bureauc bureaucrats amass extraordinary and enormous power with little scrutiny. So this is somebody that works within the CBC and they left, and this is why they left. They left because the CBC is just doing what their boss tells them. And who's their boss? Their boss is the federal government. Mm. And where does the federal government get their money to pay $1.2 billion a year? They get it right out of our pockets. Why do we have such high gas prices? Because we're, we've got a third carbon tax now on our fuel, and we're, we have promised $3 billion to climate change to the Paris Accord. Mm -hmm. So as our government drains us, uses our money for propaganda, puts us under a health legislation to control our health, it would appear that our government is a bunch of globalists who want to give our country over to a new world order. Now, journalists in Canada, like, like Tara Henley, are not the only ones sounding the alarm concerning what Prophecy USA has been teaching over the airwaves for the last three years. The independent Fox News Network recently, on Friday night, covered the latest gatherings of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Now, just listen to this clip. It'll be one minute, and I'll be right back. Hundreds of gas-guzzling private jets took off this week as billionaires from all over the world jetted off to Davos, Switzerland for the ritzy and glamorous World Economic Forum, a week-long event for the ruling class to talk down to the rest of us. And it's not for everybody. It's an invite-only event. And once you do get in, they divide you by class. You get a white badge with a blue line if you're rich enough. You just get a white badge if you're married to someone important. Or if you're just a part of someone's entourage, you get an ugly green badge. You're not good enough. They keep the elites together and they have their own little police state to make sure these people are focused on ruling the world. If you're not from CNN or the New York Times and you show up uninvited, 
they'll probably arrest you. Okay. In our book, page 40 to 43, we stated that the decade of action calls for accelerating sustainable solutions to all the world's biggest challenges, ranging from poverty and gender to climate change. And we also stated over a year ago where this was all heading. Now, apparently, it's happening right now exactly like we said it was going to. And it's very, very sobering. Yes. These people are serious folks. They mean business. And the scariest thing is they're fulfilling prophecy from a God that they don't believe in, and yet they're actually fulfilling his word. Now, uh, Klaus Schwab made all these statements about COVID-19 and about using it to accelerate uh, the agenda and of course we recorded it but instead of you listening to us why don't you listen directly from the horse's mouth of what Klaus Schwab has said about your future now listen to this the future is not just happening the future is built by us by a powerful community as you here in this room we have the means to improve the states of the world. Here's a man speaking who believes he and his billionaire friends have the power to control the future. They want a future without God. They want to replace God with government. They are opposing God and yet fulfilling the very word that God said would come to pass in the last days. Yes. Of course, it's good to know that after flying to Davos in his private Gulfstream jet, the talented and ever knowledgeable U.S. presidential envoy for climate change, John Kerry, has even more rules and regulations set for we, the little people. Now listen to this, what John Kerry says. People forget, greenhouse gases are pollution. And 15 million people a year die because of the quality of the air around the world. We're, 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 we're dealing with a crisis here, folks. It's a crisis made by human beings. Okay, now since COVID seemed to be a grand slam for the decade of action agenda, Perhaps we should get ready for the next pandemic, which, of course, is right around the corner. So to comfort us on that subject is billionaire Bill Gates, who, like John Kerry, flew into Davos in his hermetically sealed private jet. Let's hear what Bill has to say. If it comes 10 years from now, we should have far, far better diagnostic technology. That is, be able to scale up every country within a month uh, to diagnose their entire population. We're a little distracted right now, so getting the debate going uh, is happening slowly. Okay, now, it might seem very wonderful to listen how the elite's lofty goals will change the environment. They will cool the planet with our money, of course, and they will provide health, wealth, and prosperity to our benefit. But while the elite billionaires opine from their citadels of global governance, who exactly is going to do the heavy lifting in order to make this new world order come about? It's very simple. You are. And I am. We are going to carry the load. Listen to what this one World Economic Forum woman has to say. We need to accept that there will be some pain in the process. Uh, the pace that we need will, uh, will open up for missteps. Mm -hmm. uh, it will open up for uh, shortages on energy. It will create inflationary pressures. And maybe we need to start talking about that, that that pain is actually worth it. Now, this was all said 
this week at the World Economic Forum. The World Health Organization. And the World Health Organization. They, they, they all joined and they're all together mm -hmm. with Davos. They're, they're all intertwined, the G7, the G20, uh, the World Health Organization, the United Nations. Uh, it's a web of several, several different organizations that bring global governance. The World Health Organization is strictly health. Just the, the World Economic Forum is strictly the finances. But they're all working together to bring about a one world government. And you don't have to, you, you, that's not a conspiracy theory. They're saying it themselves. Yes. So our book is 100% right so far, folks. Mm. But according to the multi-billionaire George Soros, who was a Jewish Holocaust survivor, who admitted in a 1998 60-minute interview that he made a living in World War II by confiscating Jewish assets while Hitler was taking his fellow Jews to the gas chambers, is now concerned that our civilization just may not survive. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And you know, uh, there is an article in investinganswers.com, and it was famous quotes from George Soros. And here is one of 50 famous quotes from George Soros. He said, the main obstacle to a stable and just world order, excuse me, the main obstacle to a stable and just world order is the United States of America. Mm. Now, we've just heard from some of the most influential men in the world, men who've not been voted in, They've not been elected, they've not been ordained or authorized by any government agency in the world. And yet, because they have the money and the power, they're influencing the masses to follow them. But do we know something that these folks don't? You know, Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord, but the things which He reveal unto us belong unto us and to our children. Daniel 12, 10 said, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand. When you bring this up to a vast majority of people, they will laugh in your face. Yes. They haven't got a clue what's happened, excuse me, what's happening globally. And they don't want to hear it no. because it's too terrifying to them. Exactly. But the Bible says the wise will understand. Now, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I will speak to him. How will the Antichrist come to power in a secular humanist world that denies the existence of God, defies his moral laws, challenges his word, and makes war, literally war on his people? Now Daniel said in 725, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. He's talking about the, the new world order that's coming. And shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Remember the Club of Rome said we'll divide this into ten regions. Right. And, in, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall rise. Exactly as the Club of Rome said 50 years ago, yes. Justin Trudeau's father. Mm -hmm. And he, the Antichrist, shall speak great words against the Most High. This is an anti-Christ, anti-God spirit that's speaking through this group of people. 
Remember, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. And he, the Antichrist, shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Now, wear out the saints, that word wear out, means to oppress. They're going to put pressure on us with the World, Eco the World Health Organization, With the economy, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna walk through some times, folks. You want to put on the whole armor of God, and He shall think to change times and laws. Yes, they're changing the laws right now for their benefit, and they, meaning us, shall be given into His hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Now that's talking about the tribulation period. But before the tribulation comes, they've got to get to that point where the appointed time when the seventh kingdom falls, the United States of America. And remember, George Soros said that the United States was the thing that was hindering them the most. Yes. John in Revelation 17, 12 said, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom yet. They do not have a new world order yet. No. But it's coming. And it's going to, it's going to take place, folks. It's going to happen. And they will receive power as kings one hour with the beast. There's coming a time when they're going to sign. It's not now, but this is a forerunner. And they will have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. We have people now in our country that want to give our sovereignty over to someone else. They're elected officials and they're not there for you and me. They're there to climb the corporate ladder of a new world order and they want a position on it. And it says, these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. Before the tribulation comes, we're going to feel the pressure of the Antichrist spirit. You might as well get used to it. Put on the whole armor. The other day, I was laying, well, I guess it was this morning, I was doing my devotions, and I thought about the people in Ukraine. Now, folks, listen to me in North America. Look at where we're at compared to the people in Ukraine. There are husbands and sons in Ukraine that literally are willing to give their life in war to keep somebody from taking their farms, their assets, and their freedom. We in North America don't know what that's like. No. And God's going to raise us up. We're going to have some opposition and we have to stand up. It says that God will fill Babylon uh, with people as with caterpillars. He, he will fill her. Um, I will fill her with men as with caterpillars and they shall raise up a shout. Now that doesn't mean yelling and screaming, but it means stand up. We're not going to put up with this. That doesn't mean we're going to argue and fight, but I'm not backing down and you shouldn't back down from anyone who says this is conspiracy. This is not a conspiracy, it's happening. And inflation was created by these people in government who shut down the pipelines and took our resources and put a stranglehold on it while we buy oil from our enemies. This is all planned what they're doing. We are on to them. We know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we're, we, this isn't a conspiracy theory. This is why they're doing, why they're making such horrendous mistakes. But if you look in scripture, you'll see when a covenant nation turns their back on God, they make incredible mistakes. Mm -hmm. And curses start coming on the land. And it says when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when evil is in authority, the people mourn. Mm -hmm. So this is what's happening. 
And nobody knows the day or the hour of the Lord's return. But we know that before that day comes, the eighth providential nation in Scripture must rule for a period of seven years. Yes. And that's the new world order. Mm -hmm. So we're watching it come. Now we could be 10 years away, but if they have their way, this is going to take place within the next five to seven years. Right, because and, it's the 2030 agenda and they want to accelerate it. And we're in 2022, so... That's We're in 2022, so they're accelerating it. Mm -hmm. So this is all happening now in real time. We're watching it on TV, and we're listening to them actually say what they're going to do. So it's time for the church and believers to wake up. Now, we've had some people complain, saying that um, they don't get what we're teaching in their church. And I just want to say something about the pastors in the nation. There's a lot of good, good pastors. And they're just bombarded with people in the church that have gone bankrupt. They don't have money. They're, they're feeding programs. They've got kids on drugs. They're trying to do counseling. They got marriages falling apart. A lot of them are gifted to be a pastor. I am ordained, but I'm not a pastor. I spend hours a week studying, right. but I'm not marrying people and I'm not burying people. So I look at it like I'm kind of like an eye specialist or a throat specialist. You have a pastor that's a general doctor. He kind of takes care of everything. Mm -hmm. And God bless the pastors. It's, 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 it's the highest calling you can have. But I'm sitting here studying and listening and watching. And I'm all, we're starting our third book. It's called the, I think we're going to call it the coming exodus. It's what we should expect before that time when God calls us up. But I just want to say that. Um, if, you, if, you're, if you're getting meat from us, and I know you are, and you want to support us, uh, I, we really appreciate that. But you need to be in a local assembly as well and support your local assembly too. Yes. Um, but some of you are, are house-ridden, you know, if you're sick. And, and if I, I just wanted to say that. I'm not out to put other people down that aren't teaching this. Right. Um, in fact, they all I kind of different giftings. They have different giftings. This this is my calling right here. So that's why uh, I I'm teaching stuff that other people have not taught. Maybe because they haven't spent the time like I've spent. And you did have an experience in 1986. And in 1986, I had a supernatural experience with God. I mean, it was a revelation. It was a, uh, it was theophany. an experience, a theophany that very few people have had. Um, I'm not saying I know everything, but I'm telling you folks, everything that we wrote, it's happening. So, if you want to see what we've said, get the book, but also get it to see what we believe is coming because they're doing it. It's happening. So what, what exactly should we expect before this new world order comes? We should look, number one, for a totally godless totalitarian government to start rising. That's in Revelation 17, 12, and 16. Mm -hmm. We're watching it happen now. They're attempting to do it. Yes. And the Antichrist will attempt to control everyone's ability to buy or sell. There will be, eventually, a mark given after the rapture. They're working on the technology now. The U.S. government and the Canadian government are going to a digital currency. I talked to my stockbroker and he said, well, that's no big deal because he said, I never used cash anyway. I just used a credit card. And I come to think of it, that's all I use too. So it's slowly coming, slowly coming. Of course, we now use a credit card. 
sooner or later, the chip is going to be inserted into the hand. Now, this is after the rapture takes place, but we are watching it come. And it says that the wise man, the prudent man, foresees the evil and he hides himself. I was just going to comment that there have even been some stores, even recently, that have refused to take cash. Yes, there's, there's so multiple stores that won't take cash. You'll be forced into it. You're going to be forced into it. And we may have a digital currency before the tribulation takes place. Mm -hmm. But this is all gearing up. But eventually there will be a mark issued. And of course, you, you heard what the man said about following the carbon trail and each person would be, we would know what each person has for the carbon. This is all forerunner. Technology is going to fulfill Bible prophecy. But this book's ahead of it. We know what's coming. <laughs> God will fulfill every prophetic word that he has spoken. In Isaiah 46, I have spoken it, and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Um, the Antichrist is also going to persecute anyone who opposes them, especially Christians and Jews. These folks at the World Economic Forum are not Christians. They don't believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. They don't believe he rose from the dead. George Soros was asked in that interview in 1998, do you believe in God? And he goes, no. No, I don't believe in God. These are secular humanists. They believe that science is the answer. Mm -hmm. They believe that with science, they can solve the problems of the world. When, I, when, uh, when um, Babylon falls... It says, thy wisdom and thy knowledge has perverted thee, Babylon. Wisdom, in that word, when you look up the Hebrew, that wisdom means specific skills like technical skills. It says wisdom and knowledge, and knowledge refers, in some cases, to science. So it's saying your technical skills and your science has perverted you. The word perverted means fallen away like the apostasy. They've fallen away from God. And this is what's literally happening. And they're going to persecute you if you don't go along with them. Just like those two journalists from CBC are calling Leslin Lewis a conspiracy theorist and a fear monger, and they might as well throw in a racist in there too because that's exactly what they'll say. Mm -hmm. Now, during the tribulation period, what's coming Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, it will be the worst time in the history of the world to live. This is what's coming. But don't forget, we are pre-tribulation rapture. And during the tribulation, there will be seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls released, which are plagues affecting the whole environment of the planet. Mm -hmm. So you know that this thing that they say about climate change and it's induced by man? Well, there is going to be a major climate change. A major climate change. Because in Revelation 17, 16, it says that the beast will hate the woman, hate America, and they'll burn her with fire. That is going to happen. There's eight verses that confirm that. And a third of the oceans will die. A third of the fresh water will be embittered. A third of the plants and the vegetation will be destroyed, causing worldwide famines and pestilences, all caused by man. Mm. Man's greed to control the planet without the protocol of God. So this is where, this is where we're at right now. So what can the average person do, Karen? Here we are. We're watching this happen. It's very sobering. But what can, what can we do? What can the average person do? Well, first of all, it's time to get your house in order. It's time to come back to God like you've never come back to Him in your life. And it's time to make Jesus the Lord of your life, the Lord of your job, the Lord of your family, 
and the Lord of your finances. Secondly, we must let people know what's happening, even if they laugh at us. I very often send people clips, and I say, what do you think of this? Wow, look at this. This is interesting. And I'm trying, I'm like fishing. I'm sending out the hook, and I'm just <laughs> trying to see if they'll bite on it. And I've got um, people, doctors, dentists, my stockbroker, they all are, are asking me, what do you think of this now? What you, because they know I'm teaching this. Yes. Well, folks, if you study to show yourself approved, God will use you and you have the ability to get people saved and bring them into the kingdom. Now, if you don't feel you have those gifts and talents, by all means, you can send them our Bible app and everything is on the app. Many of you have the app. Back one. Where is it, hon? Right there. Okay. We have our Bible app right here. And Chris, you can zoom in on that. We have, we have TV, every program, every TV program, every verse, every scripture. Folks, use this. Use this. Send it to your children, to your cousins to your friends and you don't have to tell them to listen to it you, you can say wow i've been listening to this to this uh guy on television it's very fascinating what he says about the new world order and how it all fits into the bible it's very very fascinating folks the holy spirit will do the rest but you have to stand in the gap and deliver that word now you may not be able to do it yourself but but we've had professionals put this together and um, we, things are going much faster. You know, and you know, this little phone here, this is Bible prophecy fulfilled. Do you know that in the tribulation period, there's going to be two witnesses and they're going to be killed. They're going to be martyred in Jerusalem. They're going to lay in the street for three days and God's going to raise them up according to scripture. And it says the whole world will watch. They'll watch it in the palm of their hands. How can the whole world watch? That's a no-brainer today. It's a no-brainer. The mark of the beast is a no-brainer. Everything is happening. Yes. And you have been given wisdom and knowledge to know. You know things that these people don't know. You have a relationship with God. Pray about it. Ask Him what you can do to get this wisdom into other people's hands. Yes. And, and we've done everything we know to make it as easy as possible, haven't we, Karen? We surely have, Rick. So we're at 42 minutes now, and you've heard from Jesse, you've heard from several different people, and um, you've, you've heard from the Canadian broadcasting, the, the New York broadcasting, you've seen... Davos, Switzerland, what they're saying. Folks, it's happening. So we want to encourage you. Uh, I don't know which camera I'm on right now. I think I'm on this one now. We want to encourage you. We want you to know that we win. We want you to know that it's the Bible says uh, that the Antichrist will come against the Lamb and the Lamb will overcome, overcome. him. We overcome, folks. We have royal blood in our veins. We have the Word of God. We have two angels for every demon. And we have the Holy Spirit inside of us that says, Greater is he that's in you. Our redemption draweth nigh. <laughs> this isn't gloom and doom, folks. <laughs> Not for us. This is happy day. We're going we're gonna to fly out of here when this thing comes down. But our job now is to get people into the kingdom. That's our job. And every day, Karen, that's what we pray. Yes. And we're working hard on it. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, we're, we've, we've hit our, our time limit. And come back next week. We've got more stuff that we want to say and, and more things that we want to teach. But for right now, we just pray for you in the name of Jesus. We pray over your family, over your finances, over your health. 
over every area in your life. We just pray God's richest blessing. And we know that greater is He that is in you than he that's in the world. You were here to overcome every obstacle the enemy throws at us because greater is he that's in you. So my name is Rick Pearson. This is Karen Pearson, Prophecy USA, reminding you that Jesus is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people realize. And that's going to be one exciting day. We'll see you next week on Prophecy USA.